Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all my students. It is a nice sunny winter day here in Chicago. Getting, getting close to spring, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it's, it's uh, February 15th, so we're halfway through February. March is usually pretty good. I hope the weather is good wherever you are and your day is going great. Today we're going to look at V-Ray for SketchUp. And we're going to look at an introduction to V-Ray basics. All right, before we get started with that, this is what we're going to end up with an image like what you see here. Before we get started with that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. Click on the subscribe button and click on the bell to receive all the notifications. I just recently reached 10,000 subscribers, looking to get to 20,000, hopefully one day pretty soon. Also, connect with me on Instagram. I recently reached 2,000 followers, so looking to get to 3,000 followers. Join me uh, on Instagram. See what my students have been up to. See all the nice work they've been producing recently. All right, so let's talk about SketchUp first. So I, I'm at SketchUp.com, and you know before you purchase SketchUp, you can look at getting a free version for 30 days to try it out. So you can click on Try SketchUp, and then if you're a student, you can click on Higher Education, and you can go and get a 30-day trial. You can start your free trial there. Now, V-Ray is brought to you by a company called Chaos Group. And exciting news, Chaos Group recently merged with Enscape. So you're getting the best of both worlds with V-Ray and Enscape, all, all the same company now. If I was to go to gallery, you get some really amazing images with V-Ray, just beautiful images that people are creating, really high realism to these images. So it's a, it's a great rendering engine that's been around a long time, and it works on all platforms. So if you learn it for one, you know it for the other. So um, SketchUp, Rhino, Revit, those are the few that I've worked with V-Ray in. Also, if you're looking to get it, again, under education, you can pick your role as a student. And you can scroll down to the middle of the page. And you can get a try now, so a 30-day trial. So you can get your SketchUp 30-day trial and your V-Ray 30-day trial. All right. so. Let's uh, let's start with a new file in SketchUp. So I'm just going to go to File New, New from Template, File New from Template, and I'm going to pick Architectural. Okay, so I'm going to delete the person that comes in with SketchUp there. And I'm going to bring in an AutoCAD file. It's a really simple drawing. You could create a drawing like this in SketchUp. A real simple drawing will all will be all you need to follow along with today's tutorial. Just a few elements. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. So I'm going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to import my AutoCAD drawing. Okay, so just a really simple floor plan here. So you could, you could make a rectangular volume with some extrusions with a floor and a ceiling uh, and a couple windows, and that's all you would need. So let's look at going ahead and building this. I'm going to go ahead and build the floor first. And as I go through today, I'm going to remember to make components. <laughs> I'm going to remember, remember, remember to make components out of things today. That's the key with SketchUp. When you're working in SketchUp is you need to make everything a component or else it comes to haunt you later down the road. So just remember that as well as you're going through it. I'm also going to work with some of the shortcuts. So 
The shortcut for line is L on the keyboard. That gets my little pencil tool going. And I'm going to go ahead and start to draw this. Just tracing it. It's nice when you have something to trace. Okay, and when I get that closed, I'm going to get a closed surface there. I'm going to get a little surface. And I'm going to push pull that. So I'm going to use the shortcut P. And I'm going to pull it down. And I'm going to type in six inches. There, I get a six inch floor. I'm going to go ahead and make a component out of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the floor plan. I could hide it, but I'm going to show you how to lock an object. I'm going to click on that floor plan, and I'm going to go to Main Menu, Edit, Lock. And that locks it. It keeps it from moving, keeps it from being part of groups or being part of components. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the entire floor, and I'm going to use the shortcut G. And G is for Create Component, not Group. Group is something else. You can create groups, and you can create components. I prefer to create components. I'm going to call this floor slash roof. And that's created. And it shows up in my little components menu under floor slash roof. So we have floor slash roof. We have the AutoCAD drawing. And you still have that person. If you ever want to bring the person back out, you can do that. OK. All right. And we'll use that. We'll use this component later on. When we go to make our roof, we'll put a roof on top of it. All right, so let's go ahead and make our walls. So I'm going to use the shortcut L for line, and I'm going to go ahead and trace this. Zooming in and out like crazy. Hopefully that's where I started. I'm going to use my push tool and I'm going to type in nine feet. Okay, so that's that wall. So now I want to remember to make a component out of that right away. So go to my selection tool and make a window of it and type in G and I'll call this wall dash zero one. All right. Now I'll go ahead and make this other wall over here, and I'll do that with a line tool. So I'll type in L for line. And go ahead and draw that. Again, zooming in and out like crazy. Use my push pull by typing in P. Got to hover over the object. Hopefully, I drew that. Um, hopefully, I drew that closed. Doesn't look like I drew it closed. Let me draw one more line across here. Maybe now it's closed. There it is. Just missing that line. So if you're missing a line. You have to just redraw it so it's a closed shape. Not redraw it, but actually draw it. So just be conscious of where you start and end your line. All right, so I'm going to type in 9 feet. All right, let's see how that looks. Looks pretty good. All right, I will make a component out of that. Okay, G on the keyboard. This is going to be wall. All dash zero two. All right, going pretty good here. Okay, now I'm going to make one of these mullions. A mullion is a window frame, so I'll do that with my line tool. Normally, I can do it with a rectangle, but this is not not zero or ninety degrees. It's it's on an angle here, so doing it with a line tool. Pull that up. Nine feet. Make a component out of it. So G, call this mullion. So what's nice about having a component is I, if I want to place another one, I could copy it, which I'll do some of that. But I also can go over here to my component.
components and click on mullion and I can place it. I'm not sure where it's actually snapping to. So I, I would just place it, hit escape and select it with my move tool. Select it and then use my move tool and snap it in place. Other way I can do this is I can use my move and I can press and release the control key. Press and release the control key. That makes a copy. I can do that again with my move. Find where I'm snapping to. It stays in that in that copy uh, mode once I did the press and release. So I'm just I'm not pressing and releasing. I'm just staying in my move and it's making a copy. And one more. That one's a little off. Let's try. Let's move that into place. Okay. All right. So those those are already components. I'm gonna go ahead and draw my glass. Now, I didn't make those nine feet, so I am going to double click on one of these, and I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna actually pull up. Pull this up and um, I'm gonna pull it up to right there so it snaps. Okay, so that's a nice way to edit your component. You see they're all changing. So it's snapping to the top. And then I'll double click on it and close it. Okay. All right, a little trick there. This wall didn't go up to nine feet. Something's not nine feet at this point. But let's go ahead and fix this wall. I bet it's the second wall I drew. I just have a feeling, but it's okay. Okay. I didn't expect to show you that, but it's nice to see that. Close this group up by double clicking on it. So I to open the group I or to open the component I double clicked on it. To close it I double clicked on it. All right. So we're gonna make glass now. So I'm gonna go ahead with the line tool. And I'm going to snap and draw on 3D. Make sure I'm closing that. I'll use my push pull. I'm going to type in one inch. And I'm going to go ahead and make that a component. So what I can do, I want to show you how to hide objects. So what I can do is I can hide these mullions by selecting them. So I'm just using my, my control key to add to the selection. Okay, I added the floor there. You can see I'm going to take that out with the shift key. Okay, and I'm going to go up to my main menu and go to edit hide. Just hide those temporarily. So this way I can make a window of my glass and not have anything else selected. So I'm making that window and I'll type in G and I'm gonna call this glass-01. Okay, now I'll go back up to edit on hide and I'll choose all. All right, so we can use these components on the other side so I can bring out my mullion, place it out, and select it, and then click on the move, or use M as a shortcut for move. Okay, and I'll go ahead and move that. I'll press and release the control key. Makes a copy. Let's see, it didn't quite snap to where I want it. Yeah, select that. I knew there was an extra one there. So let's let's move this extra one. Because it's still in the copy mode. 
or was still in the copy mode. Okay, let's, let's get these other ones copied really quick. M for move. Press and release the control key. And just keep going with this. All right. Now my glass is also a component that I can bring out. It was already made. So I can go to glass. It should be the same size. This building should be symmetric. Symmetrical, I should say. Okay, I'm going to snap. I don't really have a place to snap this in, but I'm going to place it. And I'm going to click on my move. Zoom out here and try it up here. Okay. All right, so I will close this components pull down, go to my materials pull down, and I'm going to use a paint bucket to drop glass on these two. Okay, and V-Ray, when I make my V-Ray materials video, I will put material, V-Ray materials on that glass, but for right now, I'm just putting a SketchUp material. Okay, last thing I need is my floor slash roof. So I'll close this materials pull down. I'll go to components. I'll get my floor slash roof and I'll place that. All right, so that's the whole little building model. Not with too much detail, but you get the idea of it. I'll go ahead and save this. Make a folder, excuse me for that. Make a new folder. V-Ray SketchUp Exciting, V-Ray for SketchUp Alright Okay, so what's next? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a camera so what I like to do when I'm placing my camera is I like to see inside the building. So I'm going to select the floor roof, the roof in this case, and I'm going to go to main menu, edit, hide. And I'm going to place a camera and I'm going to orbit out pretty good here. And I'm going to go to camera, position camera, I get the little person. And I'm going to drop that person over here. And it has an eye level height and the lower right. Uh, I'm just, I don't click in there, but I'm just going to type. I'm going to type four foot six, like a little bit of a lower eye level. Okay. So now I'm going to orbit around a little bit. But before I orbit, I'm going to change my my lens length or my lens length is what it's called in Rhino. It's uh, also a field of view is the inverse of the lens length. So I'm going to click on my magnifying glass, my zoom, and my field of view shows up in the lower right. It says 35 degrees. I'm going to try 50. So that zooms me out quite a bit, but not not too much. It's a little distorted. The room looks a little larger than it is. But I'm going to go with that just to give me some more space. I'm also going to go to camera. And I'm going to go to look around. And I'm going to look around this model a little bit. What I want to do is see, see the glass coming just on the right side too. Okay, so look around is just a little easier than orbiting. It doesn't orbit around so much. And it's, uh, you can also use it with pan, which is shift in the middle wheel. Okay, my height, my eye level height changed. I'm going to put that back to four foot six. Okay. All right, so this is my camera view. Um, so now, again, look around was under camera, look around. Now I'm going to save this camera by going to camera. And I need to find my edit animation. So it's actually under view. So main menu view, animation, 
add scene. I'm going to right click and rename this. Call it camera 01. Good idea to keep track of these and rename these. That's the enter key to lock that in. All right, so that's locked in. So if I was to, you know, move my camera around, I can always go back to camera 01. That's locked in. I can click on camera 01 and it's going to bring me right back there. So that saves that camera view. All right, so now we have our camera. I have turned off the roof to make that camera, so I'm going to bring that back. So I'm going to go to Edit, Unhide, All. All right, I'm just, as I go, I'm control sing to save it. Close my components rollout. All right, so I think we're ready to look at, at V-Ray. So let's go ahead and find out where our V-Ray is. Now under extensions, you'll find V-Ray and you'll find um, some options for it. We can also use the pull down, or not the pull down, but rather the toolbar, which is a little easier to use than having to keep going to extensions, V-Ray. So let's find the toolbar. So if we go to, let's see where our toolbar is. Main menu, view, toolbars. And we go down to V-Ray. There's a V-Ray for SketchUp. So we're going to start with that toolbar for today. And we'll close this. And we'll go ahead and dock this toolbar. Okay, the first one is V-Ray Asset Editor, which I'm just going to call the V-Ray window. So I'm going to click on that and bring up the V-Ray window. Okay, so you'll notice... Um, Right off the bat, there are a whole bunch of materials that show up. And I don't want to have to go through and delete each one of these materials, so I'm just going to clear out the V-Ray data, or V-Ray data, however you want to say that. I'm going to go to Extensions V-Ray, and I'm going to go down to Tools, and I'm going to choose Wipe V-Ray Data from Project. Just click Yes to those two pop-ups, and see if that worked for me. So I'll go back to the V-Ray window. Okay, so it didn't get rid of everything, but it got rid of most of it. I can just use my shift key and select these and get rid of auto. All right. All right, all right. Not sure what's happening here where it says an error has was occurred. We'll see what happens. All right, so let's go to settings. And what I'm going to do is look at changing the the mode the mode from dark mode to light mode a lot of people like dark mode I have some students that make everything dark mode <laughs> and I have some students that make everything light mode but I just want to show you that you can change that so if we go to settings uh, let's see here what happened to my my window let's uh, let's bring that up one more time I might have to restart I haven't had to restart something during a video in a long time. Let's save this. Close that down and open SketchUp back up. Yeah, I haven't had to close down a piece of software during a video. I don't think ever, but there we go. SketchUp is the first time for everything. Hopefully that fixes it. Go ahead and open up. It'll take a few seconds just to get everything loaded. It's got to load in Enscape and some other plugins. Okay. All right, let's open our file back up. That's why it's always good to save. And let's click on the V-Ray window. Take a few seconds to load up for the first time. Whenever you click on it for the first time, it takes a few seconds. All right, looks like we're good to go here. So let's, we we're talking about light mode and dark mode. So let's go to settings and let's expand our panel. That's where we had the error that occurred. There's nothing we can do about it, but maybe that's good. I like when things like that happen in a video because something like that is gonna happen to you at home watching this, something similar to that. So all we did was when in doubt, restart. So I'm clicking on this little tab and I'm going down 
to configuration and under UI which stands for user interface color theme I can change that to bright and I'm gonna go with that I just think it's a little easier to read a little easier on the eyes for right now okay uh, while we're here um, progressive mode is turned on it just gives you quicker renderings and also I could change my quality to draft but the computer is running really good it's running really fast and I don't have a whole lot of objects in my scene but when you get a lot of objects in your scene you can turn this down to draft when you're doing some quick renderings alright so let's just do let's just make a rendering and see what happens so a couple places where you can click on your teapot one I can click on it from here another place I can click on the teapot is from that toolbar so I'm just going to click on that and see what we have. Make my window a little bit smaller here. Okay, so it's just darkness, right? Now you might have these side panels. You might have these. And, and the way that I got rid of those or the way that I'm hiding those is because I just need more real estate on my screen. I need more space. So there's a little tab here that I'm just double clicking on and it's bringing that in. Okay, so here's what we're starting with. So you saw what we need to end with. So we need to do a little bit of work to get there. First thing we're gonna do is set up the sun. And I wanna set up that sun so it comes through this back window in the back left there. So I am going to start what's called an interactive render. I'm going to close this. I'm going to click on the little teapot with the hand. This starts an interactive render, so I'm going to keep that open, and you see the interactive render is running when you have the teapot with the red square. And I'm going to bring open the V-Ray window. Just give myself room for both of these. And I am going to go to lights and there's a sunlight and I'm going to click on sunlight and I'm going to turn on custom orientation now some people use the SketchUp light um, the SketchUp sunlight and they're used to using that that's fine you can use your SketchUp sunlight or I can use this custom orientation see it just it interacts the, the uh, sky turns yellow because my sun is at zero I can raise that up Okay, I want to bring that daylight in and I want it to shine a little bit on this back wall and a little bit on the floor. So I'm going to bring it back over here. Let's see if that's updating. There we go. It took a few seconds to get that to update. So I'm going to go I'm going to go with that for the position of my sun and you see already we get a much nicer quality image with a little bit of light in there. What I like about V-Ray is you can you can get you can render an interior view that's not pitch dark pretty easily by one bringing in a daylight but what if you don't have a daylight so I call it daylight it's just back from my 3ds max days when I used to use 3ds max it was called daylight so uh, if you don't have a sunlight that comes in what the next thing you will want to know how to do is adjust the exposure so we're still in interactive mode, just so you know. You have the teapot with the hand, and you have the little red uh, square. We're still in that interactive mode. There's times when you just want to stop it. You need to stop it. You don't want the computer to crash. You're just stopping it because you're going to go on to do other things, and we'll, we'll see that as well. So let's change the exposure value. So I'm going to Settings, and Exposure Value doesn't have its own tab. It's under Camera and there's exposure value. The higher the value, the darker. So you'll see this start to turn darker as I move this to the left. And if I move it to the right, you'll see it start to turn brighter. And a little bit goes a long way. You see, it can get really bright in there without any lights. So I'm gonna set that at 12. So without any light, it gets it's pretty light. We'll be so I'll be making a material or I'll be making a video on V-Ray materials and a video on V-Ray lighting, both for SketchUp. Okay, the next thing I want to do is
I want to change the sky here. I want to bring down the horizon line because I don't have any ground plane or anything outside. So I'm going to go to textures. So this is textures. This is the little texture icon, the square with the little uh, gray and white checker or light gray and dark gray checker, I should say. Okay, and I'm going to go down here in the in this sunlight settings box and I'm going to go down to the bottom where it says ground albedo and then it says horizon offset and I can start to move this and you're going to see that blue is going to move down toward the bottom if I slide this all the way to the right it gets pretty close to the bottom and you see it also happening in this window up here if I need to go more than 10, I can do that. I can just type in like a number like 12, and now my value is going from probably 12 to 20 or more, more than that. Okay. I think it just doubles it. Okay, so that's adjusting that background. Now, the other thing that you want to be able to adjust is the intensity of the sun. So if we go to the light, you'll see sunlight, it has a 1. And that also shows up in this somewhere in here. Intensity multiplier shows up as 1. So if I want a little less sun, not as bright, although I like the way it looks, I can try 0.65. And that just takes down the sunlight a little bit. And if you need more sun, you could enter in, say... 2.5 and you get a lot of a lot of bright light coming in okay let's uh, I think one looked pretty good this time around okay so I am gonna stop the interactive render because I want to look at the basics of materials so right now when I'm looking at this image Everything is all one color. It's some default material from, from SketchUp, which is probably just a white default material. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a gray material for the walls because I want to separate the walls from my ceiling and my floor. So this first button is the materials button. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to click on it, right click on it, and choose generic. So I'm I'm typically starting with a generic material to begin with. So I'll go to generic, I'll double click on it, and I'm going to rename this gray. Enter. And I'll leave the color for now. We'll look at changing that. So to assign it, I need to select the objects that I'm going to assign it to. Um, since I'm not using a layer system like I might use in Rhino or my other software that I'm using V-Ray with. So I'm just selecting it. And I'll use my shift key and select the other one. So I'll just select the two walls. And I'm going to right click on gray. And I'm going to choose apply to selection. And you see those walls got a little bit darker. Okay, and I can start an interactive render. You see I have the dark gray walls in there now. So it really separates the ceiling and the walls and the floor, those all really separate from one another. Uh, I can go in here and I can make that color a little bit lighter. So you see is, this is interactive. It's changing color. I want a cooler gray, not a reddish dark warm gray, but a cooler gray this time. Okay. So that's my gray walls. I'm going to go ahead and make a material for my ceiling. Now the ceiling is already white, so it's not going to change much, but I want to actually assign a material to it. So later on, if I need to change those material properties, I can do it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the materials, right click, choose generic, double click, call this white, enter. And I haven't assigned it to anything. So I'm going to minimize this. This is probably a time where I'd want to stop the interactive render, but I've left it going. Let's see how my computer does. I already had to restart once. Why not 
I keep pushing it. All right, so I'm going to select this this ceiling. I got that selected. I'll bring my material editor or my frame. So to bring up my frame buffer, which was what was rendering, it's this button here. Okay, I got that back up. I'm going to right click on this, apply to selection. Okay, so it got darker because it's it's gray to begin with. So I'm going to change this color to white. Okay. So now I want to make a floor material that is has some reflection to it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on the white and I'm going to choose duplicate. And I'm going to call this floor reflective enter. And I'm going to keep the color white, but under reflection, I'm going to change the reflection color. I'm going to move that slider to the right. Now that hasn't been, a, nothing's happening in the render window because it hasn't been assigned yet. So I need to select my floor. I'm just clicking on my, my floor. It's, it's selected. And I am going to right click on my floor reflective and choose apply to selection. And now I get a nice shiny reflective floor. Okay, now let's let's talk about making some final rendering. So this is just a really basic video that gets into the basics. I'm going to stop my render and get you just setting up a quick scene of an interior space. Uh, getting a quick interior space can allow you to start to think about designing that space and what you want to put into it. So seeing it in 3D in advance or as quickly as possible um, allows you to just start thinking about the rest of the design and what how you want to design out the rest of this space. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about production rendering. So if I click on the down arrow for the teapot with the hand, I have a teapot by itself. That's a production render, render with V-Ray. It's a final render, I should say. It's not an interactive render. Then below that is render with Chaos Cloud, which would you could buy credits on the Chaos Cloud and you could render to their cloud servers and that costs money. And then there is export V-Ray scene file. So if you want to move your V-Ray scene file, say from SketchUp to Rhino or to Revit or whatever software you're running V-Ray in, you could export this V-Ray scene file. Okay, so let's start with render with V-Ray. And we'll see that this is a little bit higher quality of a rendering than the interactive. The interactive is not something that you want to save ever because it has a lot of noise and pixelation in it. Okay, so there's still noise in this image. You can still see some noise in it. So we want to look at the denoiser. So in the V-Ray Asset Editor or the V-Ray window, under Settings, we're going to go down in the lower right to denoiser. And I'm going to expand that down. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn it on. And I'm just leaving the default setting. So I really didn't need to expand it, but I'm expanding it just so you can see it's V-Ray Denoiser and it's, the preset is default. And let's look at rendering that. I can click on whatever teapot I'd like. There's also teapots in the rendering window. I clicked on the interactive render because I see the hand here, so I confused myself. So I'll stop that and I'll go to this pull down and just choose the regular teapot. So be aware of that. Uh, it's a good thing I'm running into that mistake. It's something you'll run into too. You want to, at the very end when you're rendering, you want to use the teapot. And we're going to see at the end of the rendering is when the denoiser gets applied. So that's when it smooths it out and gets rid of the noise. We'll see that at the very end. Okay, so that smoothed out the noise. All right, so one thing I should mention is we've been rendering at a low resolution, which is good. We've been rendering at 800 by 450, so that's kind of the new low resolution. Used to be about be about 600 
um, but the computers are getting faster now, so 800 by 450 is a low enough resolution to render out and still get fast renderings. So let's talk about changing that to a high quality image now. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And under settings, I'm going to go to render output. And I'm going to change my image width height here. I'm going to change the width. It's still at widescreen. It doesn't have to be widescreen. It can be custom. It can be many different proportions or aspect ratio. Uh, we're going to do this at widescreen. And I'm going to make this... 1920 so I'm going to go with a high definition 1920 by 1080 is high definition uh, or was high definition it's not 4k or whatever's out today but it, uh, it is a high definition so it's not a bad um, pixel count we definitely want to go even higher than that for our final final renderings uh, final renderings if you can get around 3000 pixels that is even better definitely better um, if you can render out if your computer can handle it should be able to handle that um, but for right now so keep that in mind for your future final renderings and we'll talk about that in later videos that you want to be around 3,000 pixels so make a note of that and for right now we're going to be at 1920 by 1080 which is high def and I'm going to go ahead and render that out and I'm going to zoom in right now it's at 50% I'm going to zoom in once to 100% and I'm going to maximize this window. Let that render out. So one thing that I do like about SketchUp is the 3D warehouse. The 3D warehouse is where I can go and get so many great models and different types of 3D models that I can put in here. So I'm going to look at next going to the 3D warehouse and bringing in uh, a Corbusier chaise lounge and see what that looks like. So this is rendering. Um, before I let it render all the way, let's go and get that chaise lounge. So I'm going to click on the stop button. And I'll close this window. And I'll close this window. I'm going to save. It's a good time to save. And here in SketchUp, there's a 3D warehouse button. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the 3D Warehouse button. Okay, you need to be logged in. I think if you're logged into SketchUp, you might be logged in already to 3D Warehouse, or you would just log in at this page. Okay, I'm going to search Chaise Lounge. Okay, there it is. There's the Corbu one. Corbusier one and it's got a nice little <laughs> cow pattern on it so I'm gonna click on the down button and it says load this directly into your SketchUp model yes please do okay that, so that comes in on my on my cursor here the model is behind there's a little don't let it fool you there's a little image or a picture of the Corbusier chaise lounge which I need to get rid of so I'm going to orbit around. Orbit around here. And I'm going to click on my select tool. And I'm going to double click to open that group up. Select that little image. Now, let me close this group back up because I don't even know what group I opened. For all I know, it could be a different group. So let's select the, the, the roof and go to edit, hide. And I'm orbiting. I'm going to select that, double click on it, select that little image and delete it. And then double click on the chaise lounge. All right, where am I going to position it? I'm going to position it close to me. It, wouldn't, it would look nicer where the daylight is coming in. Oh boy. Let's make sure I close this. I think it's closed. No, it's not closed. I'm really, really messing this one up. I think I'm opening a bunch of groups. Let me try double clicking on this out. There we go. 
Okay, I did. Looks like I did kind of mess up the chair. Okay, so let's go ahead and select it. Let's see how that looks in the camera view. As long as I can see it in there. Okay, it's a little bit off to the side. Move that in a little bit. Okay, I need to unhide my roof. Go to edit, unhide all objects. Okay, I'm control Sing to save. And I'm gonna go ahead and render that out. So this is at the 1920 by 1080. We'll let that render, it shouldn't take too long. Now you see you have some materials on that Corbu chair. So that came from 3D house, 3D warehouse complete with materials. And the next video will be on lighting. So my next V-Ray video will be on lighting and that's gonna come out a week after this one. And then after that will be materials that will come out a week after that. Uh, so it'll be a good little V-Ray SketchUp series of videos. So let's let this keep rendering and then it will get, um, the denoiser will come in at the end of this. There it goes, it made a big jump there. This is what I get for rendering at high def live while I'm doing a video. But it will get there shortly. But it does give you a good idea in case you're working at home with this on you know, my computer's, my computer's fast, so it does take a little time to make renderings. So what is my goal for rendering time? Less than an hour. Less than an hour. Some people say, oh, my rendering took 15 minutes. It took so long. I try to make my renderings less than an hour. So if it takes 50 minutes, that's great. That's not a lot of time. Go have lunch or make a sandwich. Okay, so that... That's rendered out at full resolution. You see it's nice and smooth. We got a good reflection and good quality there. All right, my head is gonna pop up in the upper left. If you haven't subscribed, click on my head to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll put some links in the upper right to a SketchUp Basics video and to the lower right for V-Ray for Rhino if you wanna check out V-Ray for Rhino. All right, enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you on the next one.